Hey guys, welcome to Summer Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and we are taking a look at Project Cars 2. In this video, I wanted to take a look at the physics and also the set. So, in my first video, in my first early impressions, I mentioned that the cars, in my opinion, felt a little too planted, especially under throttle. So, I got quite a few comments from you guys saying that it came down to setup. So I wanted to take a look. So I'm taking the Ferrari 4, 5, or 488 GTE race car around Long Beach. Going to take a lap or two around with the stock setup and then gonna see if I can tweak the setup, make it a little livelier and possibly closer to what we see in other titles. So this is a little livelier than that Audi I was driving in my first impressions video. It still feels kind of planted. It still feels a little unwilling to break into loose, especially on the throttle in or into the entry of the corner. It feels kind of tight and also in the middle and the exit. You can see it actually is a little eager, which is nice. So looking at that, we can tell that going into the corner and in the middle of the corner, it's feeling a little tight. So how are we going to resolve that? So after this lap, I'm going to pull up the setup adjustment and show you guys the race engineer. And I've tested a little bit in it and it seems to run pretty well. So yeah, uh, and I want to see what we can do to fix that tight condition into and in the middle of the corner. Because actually on the throttle, this car does feel pretty good. And for the record, I'm driving with no assists on. So traction controls off, stability management's off. Or wait, traction control is off. Stability control is off. And uh, the other assist that's bundled in with that, I think that's the anti-lock braking is off. So we can take a look and see how we can improve on this car. Little lock up into that corner. So that's why I kind of got a little loose into that corner that time because I overcooked it. But you can see it's kind of tight into and in the middle of the corner. So we can see how we can adjust the car and if we can fix that condition. So we got a 123.785 there. So let's go to the pit box, tune the setup, and let's take a look at the race engineer. So you can adjust braking, downforce, suspension, or gearing. I don't think we have the issue with the braking or the downforce. I think it's a suspension issue. So let's click on that. What's the issue with the handling of the car? First off, let's handle that tightness into the corner. So it's not turning into the corner. Sounds like understeer, where in the corner is it not turning as much as you like at the point of turning in or through the corner or coming through the exit? I think, yeah, when turning in was one of the biggest things. So click on that. Understeer, we're turning in can stiffen the front springs to make it more responsible when turning in. Depends on when or not, or you're bottoming out. Lower the ride height. So I don't think we are bottoming out. So let's try both, see how that goes. So we just soften, or we stiffen the front screen or its springs and lowered the ride height. So let's save the setup. And let's see where to go from there. Let's see if this has improved. So 123.785 our time to beat. Okay. We're on cold tires right now, so we need to warm them up and then we can get an idea on how the car feels.
It is turning in a little better, though. I can tell it is turning in a little better, judging on those first corners. Okay, I overcooked it a bit. Tires are still kind of cold. Still a little tight. But tires are starting to warm up. We should have a good lap coming up next. Yeah, that is definitely a better entry than when we had our last warm-up lap. Overcooked it. Dang it. <laughs> that hairpin always kills me. Okay, still kind of tight. I think I overcooked it, though. Hit that curb there. That's not going to be good for us. That's a better corner entry. What I can tell, this setup has improved the car. So the race engineer did a good job adjusting the car for us. We'll see if that reflects in the time. It might not because of how I hit that uh, roundabout. But yeah, so that is a lot. I, I won't say more planted. It's definitely a little livelier so let's see what time we get for this lap okay we cut about seven tenths off of our time nice and I think that's largely because of us improving that entry because the entry also improves the middle and out. You can see the car is actually finding its way into the corners better. And it's actually helping improve the feel of the car too. It doesn't feel as planted. It feels livelier. It feels like we are actually driving it more and it's closer to a set of course in R-Factor 2, I think. It's kind of disappointing that the stock setups aren't the best, but I sort of understand why they might go for a more stable approach. But it seems like the setups, or like the poor default setups right now, are kind of masking the improvements in the physics engine. Because now that we're dialing in this setup, I can feel the subtle nuances, these subtle improvements. I can feel the tires starting to bite a little more and that behavior. So let's see if we can make it a let's see if we can improve this setup a little more. So let's go back to the pit box, uh, tuning setup, race engineer. I'm still feeling kind of tight in the middle of the corner. So let's go to throughout the corner. Push mid-turn, stiffen the anti-roll bars. So stiffening the anti-roll bar should make it more responsive and maybe a little more active in the rear. So let's save that setup and take it out. Okay, so we've got some heat into the tires now. So this next lap should be pretty good. We have adjusted to try to get a little more grip in the middle of the corner, a little more car responsiveness. So let's see how this corner goes. Yeah, definitely more responsive in the middle. Uh, whoa. Little more inclined for oversteer out now. So 
I mentioned that it is a little snappy out of the corner, even with the stock setup. But now, how I'm driving it, we are getting even more oversteer because we're getting that good drive in the front and middle. Which I think I prefer as compared to the two planted I've felt with the stock in the front and middle. And I think planted might not be the best word. For this, you feel the rear planted, the front's not planted enough, so you're getting that understeer into the corner. So the rear's planted in the going in and through the middle, but out it starts to break free a bit, so that's understeer throughout the corners, uh, and then snap oversteer. But now we have it pretty dialed in in the beginning and the middle of the corner, a little oversteer out, so it's feeling a lot better now. And I think because of that, we're getting that information through the wheel and it feels quite a bit better in my opinion. And I think once we get these setups dialed in, it's starting to get closer feeling wise to our factor two Assetto Corsa-ish. I overcooked it there. Well, yeah, the car definitely feels pretty good. I'm not pushing too hard. I am pushing maybe about 70, 80 ish percent. But, oh man, this is a solid improvement in the way the car handles. So, I think some of what the preview guys are saying there is some credence to what they're saying i think there is that setup element where once you dial into setup it really starts feeling closer to a set of course r factor 2 like that so I just wanted to share with you that race engineer and see how it affects the car and how it performs, how it feels. Because once you get a decent setup under this car, it actually feels pretty good. You get a solid communication through the wheel. You get that idea of what the tires are doing. So yeah, you'd need to dial in the setup for this car but once you do, it feels pretty darn good. Also worth mentioning is I am driving with the raw force feedback preset. Uh, as mentioned before, there are a couple different presets that you can use for force feedback. There's the raw, which is unfiltered force feedback, really good for direct drive and high-end belt drive wheels. There is the immersive, which really gives you that raw, or not raw, but that visceral experience that communicates quite a bit. Then there's the informative, which conveys quite a bit of information to you. But yeah, so you can tell that this is getting dialed in pretty well. The car is performing well. So I think this is a great way to show off the race engineer. So... I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you think the race engineer is a good thing for Project Cars 2? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe down below and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.